Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I offer an update on the case of Trevor Jacob? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I'll put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case, move to the timeline of the crime, then offer my analysis. Trevor Daniel Jacob was born on August 6, 1993, in West Hills, California. He became interested in snowboarding and competed in the 2014 Winter Olympics in Russia. Trevor was also active in skiing, mixed martial arts, surfing, motocross, skateboarding, paragliding, and skydiving. He has his own website, which he claimed that he created for instructors and guides to offer their services around the world, but the website only appears to be a place where he tries to sell merchandise. At some point, Trevor started a YouTube channel. At the time making this video, it has 143,000 subscribers and has been viewed about 12 million times. It appears as though Trevor deleted some videos because the channel used to have more views than that. Many of the videos on his channel feature his various outdoor adventures. Here are a few of his video titles that I think sum up his channel pretty well. Skateboarding Across America, We Got Arrested, My Scariest Hitchhiking Stories, Jumping a Freight Train on My Snowboard, I Took Pizza Delivery Man Skydiving, and I Gave $3,000 to Homeless People. Trevor appears to have access to airplanes, motorcycles, and all types of sporting equipment. It's not clear how he earned enough money for all these items, but he must be getting it from somewhere. Now moving to the timeline of the crime. On November 24, 2021, Trevor Jacob made his way to the Lompoc City Airport in Lompoc, California. He put on a parachute and took off alone in a 1940 Taylor Craft model BL-65 single-engine aircraft. Trevor made it seem as though his destination was Mammoth Lakes, California, but he never intended to complete that trip. He had come up with a plan to jump out of the aircraft in mid-flight and parachute to the ground, which would of course leave the pilotless plane to crash into the ground. Using a camera on a selfie stick and several cameras that he attached to the airplane, Trevor was going to record the entire incident, edit the video, and release it on his YouTube channel. He had even arranged for a wallet manufacturer to sponsor his video. Prior to takeoff, he recorded himself thanking them. Trevor's motive for his criminal scheme was to gain money and notoriety. About 35 minutes into the flight, while flying above the Los Padres National Forest near Santa Maria, California, Trevor put his plan into motion. He pretended the plane experienced a mechanical failure, jumped out of the aircraft, and parachuted to the ground. As planned, he recorded the entire incident. After reaching the ground, Trevor hiked to the dry bush where his aircraft crashed and recovered the cameras. He recorded himself hiking through rough terrain and talking about how he was worried he wouldn't make it out alive. Not long after sunset, he stumbled upon some farmers and was rescued. On November 26, two days after the crime, Trevor contacted the National Transportation Safety Board, or NTSB, and reported the airplane crash. They immediately started an investigation. During an interview, Trevor agreed to show an investigator a video of the incident and provide the location of the wreckage. On November 29, the Federal Aviation Administration, or FAA, launched an investigation as well. Over the next few days, Trevor lied to investigators by claiming the plane experienced a full loss of power and he was not able to identify any safe landing sites. On December 10, 2021, Trevor hired a helicopter company to lift the wreckage out of the mountains. He eventually loaded the wreckage onto a trailer attached to his pickup truck and transported it to a Lompoc City Airport hangar. Over the next few days, Trevor cut up the wreckage and threw the parts into various garbage receptacles. It was almost like he was disposing of a body. He had no empathy for that innocent aircraft. On December 24, 2021, Trevor Jacob released a 16-minute video titled I Crashed My Plane, which featured the incident from November 24. The version that is currently uploaded is only 12 minutes. It appears as though Trevor cut out the portion of the video where he talked about his sponsor. 
In the video, Trevor showed himself taking off, jumping out of the airplane, and hiking through the wilderness to safety. He made it seem as though he was the victim of a terrible mechanical failure and barely survived. On January 3, 2022, Trevor lied to an NTSB investigator and said he did not know where the plane had crashed. In April of 2022, Trevor lost his private pilot certificate for operating an aircraft in a careless or reckless manner. The FAA wrote about a few items that they believed supported the idea that Trevor intentionally caused his aircraft to crash. A few examples, he was wearing a parachute, he attached multiple cameras to the outside of the plane, he opened the left side pilot door before he claimed the engine failed. He did not attempt to restart the engine. He didn't look for safe places to land, even though there were multiple areas within range. Trevor did not contact air traffic control. When he jumped out, he was holding a selfie stick with a camera attached to it. He recovered the cameras from the wreckage and disposed of the wreckage. Losing his pilot's license was not Trevor's only problem. He was also the target of a criminal investigation for lying to federal investigators. On May 11, 2023, Prosecutors announced that Trevor had agreed to plead guilty to one count of destruction and concealment with the intent to obstruct a federal investigation. This is a felony. He was facing a maximum sentence of 20 years. On December 4, 2023, Trevor Jacob was sentenced to six months in prison. He will start serving his sentence in January 2024. An attorney for Trevor indicated that Trevor took full responsibility for his mistake in judgment. Referring to Trevor, the attorney further stated, quote, he hopes to move past it and use his status as a world-class action sports athlete, entrepreneur, and influencer to be a source for good in society, unquote. Now moving to my analysis. On the same day Trevor was awarded his prison sentence, he released a video titled, I got my pilot's license back, but going to prison. Some have referred to this as an apology video, which it technically is. Here is a summary of this video. Much of this is paraphrased. As Trevor was cooking some type of meal, he casually discussed how he was going to face sentencing in about 10 days. He never imagined the situation going as far as it did and never considered how his behavior could influence young people. The video then awkwardly cuts to a scene where Trevor goes skateboarding with two dogs. Trevor completes various skateboard stunts as these dogs chase him around? If the dogs could have talked, they would have told him to put on a helmet. But I imagine Trevor would have ignored their advice. He may have felt as though a helmet would not be protecting anything valuable. After this, Trevor continued with various adventures, including performing stunts on a dirt bike, wrestling another man, and skydiving. He claimed that he was able to get his pilot's license back before the video cut to a scene of him flying an aircraft. Trevor attempted something different this time and chose not to abandon the airplane. As a side note, it is unlikely that Trevor was actually able to get his pilot's license back. I could not find any pilot certificate for him on the FAA website. At this point in Trevor's video, he moved to what could loosely be referred to as the apology section. Trevor wanted people to put themselves in his shoes. He explained how he was just someone who liked action sports and was now facing a federal courtroom. He stated this as if this wasn't all his own doing. Trevor indicated that he needed this experience to grow. It was a wake-up call from the universe, and it was meant to be. He has endured a lot of suffering and even offered an example of this suffering. After jumping out of his plane, he landed in Poison Oak and suffered terribly as a result. Trevor believed that he deserved this Poison Oak experience and communicated this story in a letter to the judge. It was almost like he was saying that he suffered enough and there was no need for prison. This is an experience that many prisoners can relate to. I imagine somebody being released from federal prison after spending 10 years behind bars. They walk up to the person who was picking them up and they say, I had a tough time on the inside. It was almost as bad as itching from a one-time exposure to poison oak. As Trevor continued with his apology video, he explained how everything after parachuting to the ground was real. As he was searching for rescue, he collapsed and could have died. Near the end of his video, Trevor mentioned how 
this experience has beat him to the ground, was what he needed to become a man, and represented a rough road. As for why he committed the crime, it was on his bucket list ever since he was a child. He always wanted to jump out of a plane and watch it crash. I guess it was just an itch he needed to scratch, like his Poison Oak adventure. If Trevor included going to prison on his bucket list as well, he ended up with a two-for-one special. Trevor concluded the video by suggesting that he has been able to see people's true colors through this ordeal. He didn't specify, but one might guess that not everybody in his life was enthusiastic about him committing a felony. His statement about true colors is curious because Trevor showed the viewers his true colors with his poorly designed, misguided, and insincere apology video. What do I think happened in this case? This is just a theory, my opinion. Trevor Jacob appears to be a high sensation seeker who is just about fearless. He's not worried about being injured, going to prison, or losing his pilot's license. Living life on the edge is the priority. As part of his desire to have excitement, Trevor wanted to be a social media celebrity. He came up with a comically simplistic plan to gain notoriety by miraculously surviving a mid-flight power failure in his plane. Despite it being painfully obvious that he had perpetrated a hoax, Trevor thought that he pulled it off. He just assumed that nobody would question the many red flags in this case. His underestimation of other people's critical thinking skills may have been due to arrogance, a lack of insight, or a lack of empathy. It's also possible he simply did not care one way or the other. Trevor believed that he could simply hide the wreckage from federal investigators and they would never realize what he did. It probably never occurred to Trevor that he would be charged with a crime. He was only thinking about the excitement. After Trevor was caught, he tried to frame his crime as an innocent little stunt designed to fulfill a childhood dream of crashing a plane. He wanted the judge to believe that he already paid for his wrongdoing through his poison oak encounter. There's also this sense that Trevor was trying to assign some type of higher meaning to his crime like it was necessary for his growth as a person. He seems to be forgetting that he chose to crash the airplane. This wasn't something that happened to him. Rather, it is something that he did on his own. Trevor's unconvincing apology, or whatever he was doing with that bizarre pre-sentence video, further reinforces the idea that he hasn't learned anything. As part of his plea deal, Trevor agreed not to contest the facts placed in the agreement, one of the things the state indicated was that Trevor perpetrated the crime for money and notoriety. So, essentially, Trevor admitted that was his motive. Yet, in his video after the plea deal, Trevor wanted to rewrite the story to make himself the victim. Trevor once again wants people to believe something that is obviously not true. This is a prominent pattern in his life. Now moving to my final thoughts. The case of Trevor Jacob can be summarized in this way. A young daredevil felt the need for speed and believed, as far as his lofty goals were concerned, the sky was the limit. With his head in the clouds, he developed a fly-by-night scheme and dove headfirst with a leap of faith. His effort to fly under the radar hit some turbulence, and he ended up in a tailspin. After going down in flames, he tried to clear the air, but his wings were clipped. Those are my thoughts on the case of Trevor Jacob. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.